music up. All right. Hello, Biohacker Nation. Here we are once again in our wonderful studio here in Cold Snake. This is, of course, Dr. Mike and the mad scientist. It's Jim. How are you doing today, Jim? I'm freaking phenomenal. <laughs> so, of course, we've got interesting, wonderful things to talk about. Uh, Jim's right here just laughing in uh, sheer joy and bliss, obviously, because he's so excited about topics. But first... Jim, you got your uh, standard spiel you want to go for? Yeah, first, if you have kids, don't sit on a tack. <laughs> not a good idea. Does not feel good. Is that just if you have kids? I don't really see that making a difference if you don't I have don't kids. see how random tacks could be spread on the couch. <laughs> but, regardless, this show is for entertainment purposes only. Not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure anything. If you do have the uh, owies or the sniffles... Those guys over at Functionized Integrative Therapeutics are literally top-notch. Right on Highway 34 in Colts Neck, New Jersey. Go over see them. They will get you fully functionized. You can also check them out on social media at Functionized. Dot com? Well, you can go to the dot com, or oh, you can okay. go to the Instagram, go to Facebook. All over the place. Easy to find. Very easy to find. A lot of great information over there, too. They've got phenomenal services. Uh, they've got the Alcat, which you test all the food sensitivities. You test the additives to your foods, different toxins in the environment. Um, check for leaky gut syndrome. It's another test. You, I mean, they test it. They work with you. They get you fixed. They get you functionized. They make you feel better, and literally you perform better in every single way. So check them on out. Functionized and cold neck. Colt neck. But also, like, as we always say, I mean, if you guys like what we're having to say, and obviously if you want to help us help you, give us an honest five-star review. Um, we appreciate the feedback. Help us get uh, bigger and grow. Help okay. us help you. I like that. You like that, that one? <laughs> I'm sure it's cliche. Someone else has already used it a dozen times. But I, I like it. We do <laughs> so what, what topic should we go with? Should we just do a little uh, chlorophyll, which is more like borophyll? Or do you want to do uh, dark chocolate? Improving your eyesight first. Yeah, the most fun thing about chlorophyll is that people kept calling it chloroform, which is completely different. We won't touch that one too much. Not with a 10-foot pole. Let's we'll <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, let's go dark chocolate. Why not? Sure. Because, I mean, it's been, you know, everyone says dark chocolate's got all these wonderful things in it. You know, as long as you eat 30 pounds of it, you get enough of the nutrients to do things like help your eyesight, right? True. So, this is going to be pretty quick and uh, painless here, but, I mean, dark chocolate's a phenomenal flavonoid. Mm-hmm. A lot of phenomenal antioxidant health benefits here. And the flavanol content in cocoa improves definite health markers along the way, such as blood flow. And the theory behind it is if your blood flow is improved, then you get more oxygen. You get more nutrients, and since blood just happens to flow through the eyes, which is really cool to look at, by the way, I definitely uh. suggest everybody takes a look in an eye. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's cool. Then, well, my first dumb question was where are you going to get an eye, and then I didn't want to go into the whole black market speech from there. So well, continue. Go back to the chloroform. and um, <laughs> Again, this is Friday for us. We're shot. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> so there is a research study uh, that was done in healthy young adults just to check out short-term improvements in eyesight. And the only thing that they did in the comparisons was uh, dark chocolate to milk chocolate. And so far, um, the study decided to show us, at the end of the day, that the dark chocolate had better improvements. No, there was actually a difference. Yeah, there was. Though, you know, as we know, just one little study, and the fact that this study here was done... Uh, measurements were done only two hours after eating the dark chocolate. We don't know how long that this was. But the study was done right. Um, so it's we, a small pilot study. It still been, shows good exactly, suggestions. It's been critically appraised, and it's not a guarantee that it's going to show long-term eyesight benefits, but it certainly can hurt. So, so it can hurt to eat dark chocolate, is what you're saying. Exactly. So how can we... <laughs> I mean, that's the basis of this, but if we're going to biohack this a little bit, if you can have improved vision two hours after eating dark chocolate, perhaps you would then want to participate in activities that involves hand-eye coordination. If you're a ball player of some sort, two hours beforehand, 
you have some dark chocolate. Can't okay. hurt. I was thinking more of um, for your non-athletes, being a lot of people complain about night vision. It might also be a thing. You're driving home at night, have a little bit of chocolate on your way. <laughs> Help you see a little bit. I mean, I'm serious. Who knows? It's Who knows on that one? New studies to do down the road. Driving in chocolate. I like that idea. Driving in chocolate's better than Red Bull and chocolate. <laughs> Red Bull. Or Red Bull chocolate together. I never really liked Red Bull. Mm. Give you wings, though, if you would eat it. So yeah. I heard. All right, so that's the idea here, especially with dark chocolate, is if you're going to do some skills that require hand-eye coordination, a couple hours before you do it, have some dark chocolate and see perhaps if you can improve upon those skills. And that's the biohack of the day for that one. I mean, that'd be a simple biohack. I mean, I'd, I like it. Absolutely. Even if you're going to throw a ball up in the air and catch it ten times in each hand. Yeah. It's practicing your hand-eye coordination. And if your eyesight is improved by doing it, then you might as well be at your best. And it's an excuse to eat dark chocolate. Yeah. I'll, I'll There's like curiosity. Did the study happen to say like what the percentage was of the dark? Because sometimes it's you know anywhere between like 60% to 100. Believe it or not, they only did 72% co- oh, cacao. Okay. So um, that's actually even and they actually got it from Trader than Joe's. Than I'm not promoting Trader Joe's. Cool place to shop at it, but they got it from Trader Joe's. So again, we're speculating then, but I would think then that if there's a benefit from 72%, 100% is not going to be any worse. That's true. So, and it just tastes delicious. And uh, just to let everyone know, the individuals had no history of disease. Oh, good point. <laughs> and they already had 2020 vision, so the 2020 was improved. Oh, okay. So it wasn't poor eyesight, it was already good eyes. Correct. Okay. So the good eyes got to be better eyes. Hmm. I like the biohack. Eat your dark chocolate. Boom. Done. All right, let's see some grass. <laughs> awesome. So chlorophyll. Um, so the way this one ended up coming up is I, I like, I guess, I was going to say heckling people. It sounds better than harassing. But uh, you know, people get supplements for everything. And I was with a friend, and she was grabbing a was chlorophyll supplement. So I figured I'd just ask her why she get why she does it. You know, people will take supplements for all kinds of reasons, and sometimes it's justified, sometimes it's myth or completely wrong. And uh, when I asked her what she took it for, she just started giving me a laundry list of a few dozen things, and then she had to wake me up to continue giving me the list. <laughs> so I was like, okay, why do you actually take this? Uh, and then she continued the same list again, and she just didn't get my point. So I'm like, you know, let me go ahead and see what exactly research shows that chlorophyll is good for. Okay. And uh, I mean, you've already told me off the air that you took chlorophyll for a while for certain I was things. taking chlorophyll for years. And it was simply, well, it's supposed to be really good to clean the blood. And why not be the cleanest possible? I was a neat freak. <laughs> I was just put it that way. I was a neat freak. So if I'm clean around the house, I want to be clean inside the body, too. There you go. And you I actually one. did just watch Iron Man. And true, I did not have shrapnel stuck around my heart that I was trying to purify. <laughs> but, I mean, Tony Stark Iron was Man. awesome. So if Tony Stark was drinking chlorophyll... Well, then why did I even have to do the research on this? I wasted my time. Should just watch should, the movie. Should have just watched Iron Man. I mean, it is an awesome movie. It is. <laughs> right, I'm not into heroes, but we're going to go rant again. This happens too much. So you know, let's just really touch quick what chlorophyll is. For people who don't know, it's a plant pigment. Uh, it's really what gives green plants their green color. I mean, simply put. Uh, a little less simply, as uh, Jim kind of started to talk about, with the blood, and we'll get to there soon, is that chlorophyll structure... Okay, this is that boring science, but I think it's awesome. That's, could be for it. And I'm aroused. In in science, let's do this. You can't say I'm aroused and let's do this. But I'm going to continue <laughs> with this feel. Uh, so <laughs> the form of chlorophyll is very similar to our blood. Like the structure is you know, very similar. Uh, the big difference is our blood has iron in the center of our heme and chlorophyll has magnesium. So they thought, heck, maybe it's so close to our blood, maybe it helps. And we'll get to it in a second, but it does appear so. But there's two main things with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is fat soluble. So as we talk about every episode of bioavailability, you need fat for it to actually absorb. So everyone who eats their salads with no salad dressing or fat free, without going too much on a tangent on it, Avoid fat-free dressing. Yes, there's other ways of getting fats. I see you looking at me before no, you go that No, I was just watching the but documentary on Netflix last night while I was trying to fall asleep. <laughs> and, I, yeah, okay, biohackers, I know. Don't watch TV to fall asleep. I get it. <laughs> My mind was wound up. I didn't feel like reading a book. 
So I figured, why not watch a uh, documentary? It also slows down your metabolism, but we can say that for another podcast. That was pretty cool. <laughs> the uh, the documentary was all on keto. Okay. And overweight people who literally were... I mean, they're terrified about changing anything and everything because they're so comfortable and used to what they were doing. I know this is getting off the topic, but... Because we always try to stay on topic <laughs> with great success. But they agreed to switch to a ketogenic diet and they had a nutritionist go through their house and throw out everything that was processed literally they threw out 99% of everything that was in their household and within five days even children who had were on the autism spectrum and had not spoken in literally since birth were starting to form sentences there were huge 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 changes so the whole and it went into how we got on to fat is bad for you, and it did show how the idea of fat was not the underlying cause of coronary artery disease, it was sugar. Sugar was the underlying aspect. Oh, you'll be proud. I get this argument with people like once a week about it. Someone just yesterday said, oh yeah, I had to stop eating eggs because my cholesterol was high. First off, the cholesterol came back as 180, which... That's fine, you know, and then some. It's actually maybe even a little low with a lot of what studies show. Like 200 yeah. up is really where... I mean, we can go on that another thing, but yeah, still, we hear that all the time. But, uh, how do we get on about Netflix and this? Is because this? it's fat sizable. Got it. <laughs> Boom. So, in other words, you know, have your fat. Yeah. And some grass, too. Have your fat and your grass, too. Perfect. <laughs> the big reason why I touch about the fat soluble is most of the chlorophyll supplements is a different form of chlorophyllin, and that's water soluble. So the big reason I want to talk about that is you can eat as much produce as you want and there's no side effects and you only absorb so much of the fat soluble chlorophyllin. There's not, it doesn't appear to be too many major side effects except for like stomach discomfort and uh, it could make your skin a little bit more sensitive to the sun which is almost ironic and paradoxical when we come to a few things later. Um, but overall it appears to be safe. So the big question is does it actually do anything? I mean, it's in, you know, almost all of our wonder foods, so you would think that chlorophyll is worth something, but it really comes down to supplement, is it? So there's a lot more research on chlorophyll than I thought. A lot more. Mostly only on a few subjects of it, but I took a while to try to limit down to less than 2,000 papers. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I wasn't going to do that. Sorry, Biohacker Nation, I love you all, but there's a certain limit to what I'm going to read for an episode. <laughs> and um, we'll start with the big one, uh, a couple of the major things people brag about it is one is a natural deodorant. I don't know if this was something you looked for with all your wonderful hygiene and trying to stay clean. I used to do that uh, rock salt deodorant. And I don't know that one. You're not familiar with that one? It's just this big rock. It's a hard thing. It's Wait, salt. It's a salt rock? <laughs> yeah, and I was adamant about using it for a while, and then there became that point in my relationship that uh, I either wanted <laughs> to keep her or not. So I had to switch out the uh, rock salt deodorant because it didn't work as well as I thought it did. And, you know, I'm a guy, and I uh, I kind of work out a lot, and at that time I was playing baseball, and the rock salt was not exactly pulling its weight. That's kind of the way this seems to go, too, as far as supplements go. The, I mean, they were bragging about it. Mean, it's one of the big things oh, they boast about, about. Chlorophyll, chlorophyll how that's Chlorophyll like, here in the state, yeah. Yeah. How it's supposed to help with body odor. Yeah. Uh, and fecal odor, we'll call it. And it, yeah, it makes your gas supposedly not smell like gas. Uh, the supplement version of it. How about you just eat stuff that you can digest? That's kind of where it comes oh, into. No. Uh, the supplement does not work whatsoever. No. But they did. Sh- there was a, uh, we'll call it an observational study, so it wasn't the best, but people that ate more produce smelled less. However, then there were people who eat more produce tend to be smaller, thinner, more slender individuals. So that could also play a factor into it. Hmm. So that one's debunked to maybe, at best. Uh, some of the cool stuff where it does help with is hunger, of all things. It is both the chlorophyllin and chlorophyll does help manipulate your, we'll call it your satiety hormones or hunger hormones. So it increases uh, leptin? That was actually one I did not find anything on with leptin. Interesting. But it does, uh, they were able to find that it shows to help manipulate, I mean, a cholesterol, I could not pronounce this in school, I can't pronounce it now, but cholesterol, colon. We'll say you pronounced it right, sure. That one, all right. Yeah, that one, the bile one. I remember what it does. Uh, ghrelin and insulin. It helps affect all those all to the positive degree. And that was both the supplement 
and eating your produce, which is kind of cool. Uh, a big one, the other big one that they do is anti-cancer, uh, both for help against carcinogens and actually help with chemotherapy. Uh, so having, this was IV uh, chlorophyll, so actual chlorophyll, the fat soluble, shows it's actually great as a chelator for anything from, well, pesticides, which we talked about just the other week, mercury, and uh, calcium deposits. It does help bind and remove that from your body. So as far as, I hate the term cleansing, uh, but it does appear to help very well with that. Uh, that they've been doing that in hospitals for a while. So it's good to know that they're doing it and it works. Mm -hmm. uh, you have something to say. You're giving me a odd stare there, Jim. Put you on the spot for a second. Keep on going. Just You're rocking this. <laughs> um, and the other thing with the cancer prevention is that, okay, obviously I hope no one has to take chemotherapy. Unfortunately, many people do. But it does seem Back that... Back to the uh, keto video. <laughs> Way to interject, yes. Oh, <laughs> in it. A woman, literally, she was prescribed um, chemotherapy, and she switched to a very high fat, no processed food, no sugar uh, diet, and the uh, metastasis in her breast tissue there, literally within five months, had disappeared, 100%. That is awesome. I mean, not that we at all support the keto diet, it's awesome. It's good to know that more of It just down. shows, I mean, the idea that... Cancer feeds on sugar, sugar. <laughs> and a deoxygenated state. And then in the same bounds of this, I mean, again, people who tend to be do keto correctly and actually do the high fat with produce, not just high protein, a lot find this back into the chlorophyll with eating a bunch of produce, it, it's going to help with the same thing. Right. Uh, it helps sensitize tumors is really what it is to both natural our body's natural ability to cause apoptosis to get rid of the cancer, which obviously when you stop the sugar coming in or you have uh, better control over your insulin levels, it's going to help with that. It makes sense also if it helps you oxygenate the blood. Tumors don't necessarily like oxygen. No. <laughs> Everything our normal tissue likes, most of that stuff tumors don't like. Right. So if this is increasing something good for us, then the bad stuff stays away to make it pretty simplistic. Yeah. But... Just to specify with the anti-cancer effects on this, that's the non-supplement form. So eat your food, eat your greens, <laughs> nothing new here. Uh, but it's good to know that it does work. It's also chlorophyll, so it is a great antioxidant and uh, what's the other word for Oh, anti-inflammatory. should have had that one off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my curiosity with it is it's packed, chlorophyll itself is packed full of a bunch of wonderful things, pretty much all your main vitamins, A, C, E, K, beta carotene, magnesium, iron, potassium, omega-3s, has all this stuff. And the fact that chlorophyll actually binds to uh, a lot, we'll just call it toxins to make it simple, mm -hmm. is even better. It, they're not really sure about dosage or bioavailability or how much chlorophyll actually absorbs. However, even if it doesn't absorb anything, mm -hmm. it's still clearing out all the junk so your body can take care of itself more. Uh, Yep, I'm just going through this real quick. And the last big thing, was this something? That is something. Skin care. Because that was one of the things that my friend mentioned she took it for, one of the 82 of them. And the short, yeah. Is that perfect help. skin? Wasn't bad skin. Okay. Youth definitely helps. Okay. But, <laughs> um, but it does help a lot with acne. It's one of the few things that chlorophyll ointments apparently work a lot with acne. Extra oxygen. Bacteria doesn't like it. Not at all. <laughs> Yeah, and it helps, it really, a lot of it does seem to come down to helping with the blood oxygen levels. Uh, so her main question she had me is, is she wasting her money, does it help? Um, it does appear the supplement chlorophyllin could help some, but for her specifically, or really anyone out there, she's vegan, so I'm assuming she's eating enough produce, most people should be anyway. If you're getting better sources from your food, eat your leafy greens. Spinach, which is, I mean, most people eat, I mean, spinach is not like it's a rare you know, vegetable to eat. It's got one of the best sources of it. Eat your salads with fat involved. Don't sprinkle sugar on top. Put a little olive oil, not honey. Got yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it could work, but again, always get your get your vitamins and minerals from food. Supplement with supplements. Mm. Um, that's pretty much most of what I got on that one. Is yeah, so chlorophyll's chlorophyll good. Stuff. Good. Eat your vegetables. You can supplement <laughs> if you want. 
Is there a great need to it? Uh, I guess if there's a need for it, then yes. If you're yeah. if you're a massive, you're only a meat eater. You refuse to eat any produce. Then yeah, take some chlorophyll supplements. Otherwise, just eat. And if you want to be just like Tony Stark and Iron Man, <laughs> then jacket. drink it daily anyway. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's talk, before we uh, close up today, about chewing gum. Why not? So it's like eating chocolate to eating plants to... Chewing gum. Close to plant. So, I've been fortunate. Call it genetics, whatever you want. I have never had a cavity in my mouth. Mm. Check it. No cavities. I didn't get a check it yet, Jim. Just trust me on this one. <laughs> You're good. And I've been asked many times, what is your secret? What's your secret, Jim? Oh, I... Thank you for asking. <laughs> Bazooka. Back in the day, when I was a little kid, I chewed... Baseball stereotype. That Here was we it. are. I chewed bazooka, chewing gum. I have breakfast in the morning, put in the bazooka gum. I chew it until lunch. I put it back in the same piece, name you. It's not like I'm getting a new one. I would have snack or whatever, dinner. Before every meal, I'd take it out after every meal. I'd chew it all the way through bedtime. Sometimes at bedtime I put on the bedpost, on the nightstand. <laughs> if it was good, or, everyone yeah, thought I'd throw it out. But so good now. I would chew the same piece of gum all day long. Hmm. And my dad used to joke around about the same thing. He didn't have cavities either. And he would say he drank his milk. But we've already had that. Yep, that was a month so, or two podcast. Right, go back to that podcast and learn why that has been debunked totally. However, he did the same thing. And to this day he does the same thing. Hmm. He chews bazooka gum. Now it's uh, sugar free because the diabetes thing going on. But at this point, he still chews bazooka from morning till night. I've chosen other brands than bazooka, but a lot of people, when they say, no, gum can cause cavities, yeah, they chew, get the sweet sugar on their teeth, and they spit, spit it, it out, out, and then the sugar sticks there. Yeah, most people don't chew gum for more than, what, five to 15 minutes? Yeah, I. Because the flavor's gone. I was <laughs> chewing the gum, the flavor is far gone. I enjoyed chewing the gum, see how big I can make the bubbles. <laughs> I chewed the sugar away, and it increases saliva output. It in- literally cleans the teeth. It cleans the mouth. It also developed the muscles of mastication, so I could chew my food better in that. Literally, I was training chewing all day long without actually trying to train chewing. I mean, if you're curling biceps 24 hours, your arms would get bigger, too. I buy it. makes sense. So, biohack for the anti-cavity, chew gum all day. Till the flavor is gone, the sweet is gone. Way the, past the flavor is gone. Yeah, literally. And just keep on chewing it. it. You're gonna have a cleaner mouth as a result. Less bacteria in the mouth, less cavities. Still, floss at night. <laughs> brush twice a day with a soft bristle brush. It's not a replacement for all your basic hygiene. Rinse your mouth. <laughs> I, I like using peroxide, but that's just me. Hmm, nice burn. <laughs> Goes away. <laughs> don't, don't do it for a minute or more, then you'll have some sores. But other than that, you're good. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking to d- reduce chances of cavities, can't go wrong with that. Um, research has also showed some other benefits that I had never actually thought of myself here. And believe it or not, chewing gum seems to increase alert, sustained wow. attention. And it's not totally conclusive, this evidence, but it does show that you may be more alert in just the chewing motion. I have a botched theory as to why, but that's just a... Let's play off the top of my idea. Botchy ball? And go for it. Botchy ball? <laughs> well, I mean, this is really just off the top of my head for it, but um, I mean, if you're constantly chewing, you're constantly moving all the muscles in your face, it, I would assume this can help with blood flow going to important places in your face, like your brain. So I could see that helping with... I mean, same thing I do. You know, if you got a swollen ankle, moving the ankle is going to help. Absolutely. I, I'll buy that as my reason for now until proven otherwise. Um, another big one may have the same type of effect. Improves anxiety. Anxiety levels go down. being similar reasons. Exactly. Again, speculating. It's thought, it, you know, it does increase cerebral blood flow. Alters ah. brain waves. And they're not quite sure if it's the chewing motion or it could be the flavor that's in that gum. So more, mm. I, you know, more th- research needs to go behind Food this. Food for thought? Tasty. <laughs> gum also has been shown to uh, reduce... Snacking and hunger levels. You already got something in your mouth. You're not going to be thinking about putting something in your mouth. Yep. 
but <laughs> it would be a great time for video to see the arrival. <laughs> no, I mean back in the day when I was uh, wrestling. I mean obviously I would choose gum a lot. A lot of it was to spit out. You know, lose that you know tenth of a pound of water every hour from it. But now I was never hungry when I was chewing gum constantly until I got a stomach ache from it. Did you ever experience that since you chewed gum for hours? Ever get a stomach ache after chewing it for a couple of hours? I didn't swallow it. Uh, so, didn't say for swallowing no, it. No, I said no. for chewing it. No, I never had. And that might also just mean getting hungry after a couple of days. Could probably be it. Um, the only thing that has been kind of found that gum could have a detrimental effect on, other than, you know, just coating your teeth with sugar, is headaches and TMJ pain. Yep, excessive chewing can cause the pain. It's due to tension in the muscles that kind of pull on the fascia up in the head and will could cause some dysfunction. However... I will let our viewing audience know that in my long but brief existence here, I've never had any headaches or TMJ pain, period, much less associated with gum chewing. The only thing I've noticed is, thank goodness, I've never had to get a drill to my face. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Keep it that way. I hope so. I certainly hope so. I got so much more to talk about, but we got so many more weeks to keep on going, so why don't we hold off on things such as uh, hangovers and what you can do about them for next week. Ah, I'd love to talk about hangovers next week. We should probably do some experimenting about that leading up so our view, listening and possibly viewing audience has the uh, best knowledge and understanding when we're done. Well, then they'll be able to tell the next podcast based on how we're feeling if it was a success or not. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll talk about hangovers and maybe something else next week. How's that sound? I love it. Let's do it. Done. Well, I got nothing else. How about you, mad scientist? Anything else you want to throw out there? Even yeah. Though we already started the recap, so... I'm going to hold on to it till next week. But, oh. yep. So, as always, thank you so much for tuning in and tell a friend or two. And if you don't have any... Uh, Make some friends and then go tell them. Or go on Facebook. You just get a couple thousand street. friends you never have to meet in your life. Walk down Walmart and just shout, listen to Biohack Humans. I don't mind. I don't mind either. I would actually <laughs> love to videotape someone doing that. Great. We should do that. I, I, huh. This is truly a think tank here. There's no downside to it, right? Other than telling us to leave and then we can just yell, why are you kicking biohackers out of the store? Make a big scene out of it. <laughs> listen to the podcast. All right, we should go. Okay, we're done. Thank you, Biohacker Nation, as always. We out. Peace.